All right, uh, so today uh, we're going to talk a little bit about flexibility. Um, but before we get started, I just want to introduce myself. So my name is Brian. I'm a personal trainer at GW. I'm also a first year physical therapy graduate student at GW's program. Um, and uh, my, a little bit of my background um, is I studied athletic training in undergrad um, at University of Miami, and now I'm at, uh, I'm at GW. So um, let's talk a little bit today about flexibility. And it's not letting me go to the next slide. There we go. All right. Um, so some objectives by the end of the session, you'll be able to uh, recognize appropriate warm up activities, um, identify the appropriate post activity stretches for optimizing flexibility, and you'll be able to apply flexibility practices to your personal exercise routine um, so that after today, you can hopefully have a better understanding of how you can optimize um, your own movement patterns. And so a little bit of behind why we want to do this. So um, you want to uh, perform the appropriate pre and post activity stretches and flexibility techniques um, to keep the muscles safe. So um, it, it's very easy after you start to ramp up your level of activity um, or and if you don't properly take care of your muscles to, um, to easily get ruptures and strains. And strains are just uh, micro tears to the muscle that can grow and get bigger and bigger over time um, if you don't appropriately take care of the muscle. Um, and so you can end up getting tears or larger um, injuries such as ruptures, which would be a, a total tear of the muscle. Um, so in order to avoid that, um, stretching helps to keep the muscle nice and loose. I mean, so by doing um, strengthening as well as flexibility training, um, you, you definitely ke help keep the muscle healthy um, and work to make it not only stronger, but also more pliable um, and elastic and resistant um, to any sort of perturbations or activities. Um, and appropriately timed stretching can help maintain optimal muscle length for force production. So um, for those of you who like to uh, strength train to, to end up building, uh, building strength to get stronger, um, that uh, maintaining optimal muscle length um, helps to do that. And it's not something that people typically think of, um, but in uh, maintaining appropriate muscle length um, helps for um, optimizing force production. Um, and you also want to prevent poor posture of joints. So what I mean by that um, is not only your, your spinal posture and the way that you stand, um, it, can all, it can have an effect on that, but also um, if you don't appropriately maintain flexibility um, and range of motion of different joints and body segments, um, you can develop things called contractures and you can limit your range of motion, which can end up making you um, less functionally capable um, and actually reduce um, your ability to do certain activities. So in order to maintain that, we just want to make sure that you have full range of motion and flexibility. Um, so when do you want to do this? So uh, immediate, and I'll get into more of this, but just to introduce it, um, you want to engage in warm up immediately prior to activity. You want to engage in stretching immediately after activity. Um, you want to utilize your rest days when you're not doing any sort of uh, moderate or intense physical activity. You want to optimize those days by focusing on flexibility. Um, and in terms of frequency, twice a day is most optimal in terms of um, either maintaining or gaining flexibility and to ensure that you don't um, uh, regress at all or end up losing uh, motion or flexibility. And so let's talk a little bit about pre-activity, so the warm-up. So um, the main idea here is that you want to get the body moving and you want to raise your heartbeat. Um, and so you want to get blood flowing throughout your muscles. You want to get your heart pumping. Um, you basically want to just get your body nice and warm. And so um, the idea here is that if you start to exercise or move or push or put load through your body, um, when you're, when the muscles and the joints and the ligaments and, and everything is cold, um, it, those, those tissues are less elastic at that point. Um, and so applying a load that's inappropriate through those, through those tissues can end up causing more harm than good, um, and can stop you from exercising, which obviously is, um, not what we want to see. Um, what you don't want to do before activity is static stretching. So what I mean by that is holding a, a typical hamstring stretch, like bending down and touching your toes. Um, you don't want to do that pre-activity, um, because, um, doing that can actually reduce your force production by a pretty significant amount. Um, it can also predispose you to injury. So if you stretch your hamstrings and you do a lot of stretching prior to a resistance training workout and you start to uh, then go do leg press or squats and you put um, a pretty 
a pretty heavy weight on it and you, you start to get close to um, what's your one repetition maximum, you can actually, be, because you just elongated that muscle and now you're using it at a, at a non-optimal length, you can actually predispose yourself to um, sustaining one of those strains that I mentioned, um, or even a muscle rupture, um, which would obviously be something we want to avoid. So warming up prior to activity to warm up the body, um, the muscles, the heart, um, and all the other connective tissues in your body is the goal. And so the warm up, some parameters for it. Um, so you want to keep it to around five or 10 minutes and you want to do it before any kind of activity you do. And some examples of what we, um, what I mean by warming up, um, you can either walk or jog, excuse me, you can use um, one of those TheraBands um, around, different, uh, around different body segments. You can use it around your knees and, and do some sorts of um, some squats or um, clamshell activities. Um, just some things to get the muscles activated um, and so that you can start to feel like those muscles are working. Um, you can also do jumping jacks, you can do push-ups, you can use a jump rope, you can do some jump squats, um, and there's really, um, there is not um, a, a real limit to what, what you can do as a warm-up. Um, just the main goal, like I said, is to get the, the body moving, get everything warm, and get yourself ready to, to start engaging in some more intense or moderate physical activity. And post activity, so you get through your warm up, you get through um, your exercise. And post activity, you want to do a cool down, which is similar to the warm up. You just want to dial it, dial it down, basically the intensity of the activity that you're doing. And post cool down, you want to stretch. And so now is the appropriate time after activity is when you would like to hold the static stretches because you want to cool the body down and promote some relaxation throughout those muscles as well as um, the rest of your body. Um, and that relaxation can have a systemic effect um, on the rest of your body and your mind and everything. So um, doing static stretching or holding a stretch after activity is ideal. Um, what you don't wanna do is um, ballistic or bouncing stretching. So what I mean by that um, would be like, you don't want to keep your knees straight and kick your legs straight out in front of you um, after activity um, because if you're not entirely comfortable with the range of motion that your different body segments have, and you just reduced the amount that you're able to control your body because you just fatigued your muscles and then you start to do these, ty these types of bouncing activities, um, you can actually end up stretching the muscle too far and putting a tension strain on it, um, which could end up tearing the muscle a little bit and, and at the very least can give you some uncomfortable pain um, that is unnecessary and you don't want to uh, encounter before between your workouts. Um, so you want to try to avoid uh, ballistic or bouncing type stretching. Um, one, something that's important to consider as to why you want to do static stretches after activity is because um, after your activities, your muscles and the other tissues that I mentioned, they're warm and they're pliable. And so you just had blood, uh, blood flow running through them readily. You um, were using them and now they're elastic and they're pliable and they're, they're really moldable. So you want to take advantage um, within, uh, I'd say around 15 to 20 minutes after activity. Um, you want to take advantage of that window so that you can get the best long lasting results. Um, because if you stretch a warm and pliable muscle, um, the length, um, the difference in length that you gain um, between that versus stretching a cold muscle um, it's something that you would notice and you'd feel, you'd feel the difference. And also you'll get better, longer lasting results. Um, so it'll feel like it's working better. So you want to stretch after activity, some parameters for stretching. Um, you want to place the muscle in an elongated position with discomfort, with some discomfort, but no pain. So what I mean by that is, um, the easiest example to think of is stretching your hamstrings. Um, so an easy way to stretch your hamstrings is to, is to pick your, um, pick one of your heels up onto uh, a short step or a table or a chair um, and to keep your, your back nice and neutral and flat and you want to just flex at the hips and bend, bend the trunk forward like this. Um, and so you want to, you'll feel tension in your hamstrings and at a certain point you can very easily, some of us uh, have super tight hamstrings and you'll feel tension extremely quickly. Um, but for those of you who don't have um, so much tightness, then you may be able to get further. So you want to, you'll, you'll feel a tension, you'll definitely feel a pull, and that might be uncomfortable, especially if you're new to stretching, um, but that discomfort goes away over time. Um, but you should not feel any pain or any numbness or tingling or any sort of abnormal sensation like that running up and down your leg or whatever part of the body that it is that you're stretching. So you want to feel tension, but no pain. 
Um, like I mentioned before, don't bounce, especially if you're reaching over to bend over to touch your toes, um, and especially if you're stretching a cold muscle. Um, you don't want to bounce. It just can predispose you to unnecessary injury, and you can get the job done just as well with a static stretch just by holding a stretch. Um, so that would be more, um, more optimal to use. Um, for in terms of time to hold it, um, the best time is between 15 to 30 seconds. Um, anything beyond 30 seconds typically has um, pretty equal results as it does with 30. So you can hold it for 60 if you're more comfortable with that. Um, but the results long term will should be similar to to would be they would be similar as if you had held it for around 30 seconds. Um, and you want to hold each stretch for about two to three times on both sides. So if you're stretching your hamstrings, be sure to do um, both legs. Um, which is a, a simple thought, but sometimes you can forget. So it's easy to remember, um, easy to remember to just do both sides. Um, and I mentioned before, you want to perform um, these twice a day, especially if you're trying to increase the amount of flexibility, but also if you're trying to maintain it, it's, it's good to, to fit it into your day um, and squeeze it into your routine to do it twice a day. All right. Um, so just a couple of questions to see. Um, so you can quiz yourself to see if you are uh, tracking with the material. Um, so which of the following would be best to do before a run? Would you A, walk for 30 minutes, B, stretch the hamstrings using a belt, C, kick the legs out in front with the knee straight, or D, jumping jacks and TheraBand exercises? Um, so hopefully you chose letter D, jumping jacks and TheraBand exercises. Um, so those, uh, so since it's before a run, you want to do a warm up, and so you want to get some dynamic activities going. And jumping jacks and TheraBand exercises would be great for getting not only your heart pumping and getting some aerobic activity going, um, but also TheraBand exercises would start to activate some of those muscles that you might use during a run, um, like some of your hip, your knee, and your lower leg muscles. Uh, next question, uh, which of the following would be most appropriate to do to gain flexibility after a hard weightlifting workout? A, shower, B, run on the treadmill, C, chest stretch in a door frame, or D, jumping jacks? And so hopefully you chose C, chest stretch in a door frame. And so since this is a post-workout activity, uh, the best thing that you want to do is a static stretch. And so using a door frame or other equipment around you is a really easy way to get some stretches in. You typically don't need any fancy equipment to stretch. You can just use the materials that you have around you. Um, and in order to uh, stretch your chest, using a door frame is a really simple, um, is a really simple tool to use. Um, you can just lean into it, hold your arms up at your side um, and apply the stress at your elbow right here. Um, and you can use the door frame to easily uh, stretch your chest. The other activities, um, if you were to run on the treadmill, so you could do that in theory. Um, if you wanted to do a cool down, if you wanted to just get the body um, to relax a little bit, so that would be that wouldn't be inappropriate. But in terms of gaining flexibility, um, the best would be to do a chest stretch. And similar with a jumping jack, um, you could you could do that um, at a moderate, a mild or moderate intensity to try to lower your heart rate and try to. Um, just kind of relax the muscles and relax the body from your intense workout. Um, but the best for gaining flexibility um, would be to do the chest stretch in a door frame. And so that's the reference. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, if you have any questions, uh, be sure to reach out. And yeah, have a great week. Did you like my instructions? So click on the other part of the screen.